Today we'll be discussing another option for radiation therapy. We'll be sitting down with radiation oncologist Dr. Bob Des from the University of Michigan to discuss another type of radiation therapy, one in which can be a faster and more efficient form of radiation therapy when compared to conventional treatments for prostate cancer. So listen in. The show today is brought to you by our sponsor, the Prostate Health Academy. More and more healthcare consumers are leveraging online resources to not only prepare for appointments, but also validate physician recommendations. With the Prostate Health Academy, you no longer have to spend hours upon hours on Google and YouTube doing your research. The Academy will save you time and quickly get you up to speed with comprehensive and easy to navigate lessons that I've prepared for you. We also have an active private community forum, and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on Join Now. Again, that is www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on Join Now. We'll see you on the inside. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On a weekly basis, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. The Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. We're very happy to be able to introduce to our podcast listeners today, radiation oncologist Dr. Bob Des. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of Michigan. Dr. Des has published extensively in peer-reviewed journals on prostate cancer, and has collaborated to create novel prognostic models to characterize prostate cancer disease aggressiveness, to analyze racial outcomes differences in settings in which disparities are minimized, and to advance more convenient forms of treatment including stereotactic body radiation therapy and characterize long-term quality of life post-treatment. His guiding principle is to deliver the right treatment to the right patient at the right time. He is interested in maximizing efficiency, minimizing burden, and understanding the long-term toxicity risks of treatment. Dr. Des, welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure to, to speak here today. Well, here on the podcast, we have covered a wide range of treatments for prostate cancer. While we had just briefly touched on this particular treatment on past episodes, I wanted to circle back around to it again and dive in even deeper today. Today, we'll be focusing on stereotactic body of radiotherapy, or SBRT, for prostate cancer. Dr. Des, what is stereotactic body radiotherapy? What I'd like to do, so stereotactic body radiation therapy, or SBRT, also known as SABER or stereotactic ablative radiation therapy, one of many acronyms we tend to have in radiation therapy, is a treatment that, at least in the United States, tends to be five treatments or less. I mean, across the world, it can be a few fractions greater than five treatments. But ultimately, it is the result of advances of technology over the last several decades that allow us to give higher doses of radiation in a shorter period of time. So what, whereas if we take a, a trip down memory lane, if we go back several decades, you know, we used to treat curative radiation therapy for localized prostate cancer took two months, eight weeks of radiation therapy with or without anti-androgen or hormonal therapy. And the evolution of technology has allowed us to be more precise know where our radiation is going, and that's called image-guided radiation therapy, imaging the prostate every day to make sure this fancy plan that we have designed is actually deliverable each day. And then the evolution of the linear accelerators themselves has allowed to give more sculpted radiation, and those terms tend to be IMRT or VMAT. Those sort of co-evolution has allowed us to deliver these treatments in as short as 20 treatments or 20 fractions. And sort of the next step of that over the last decade has been these five treatments or SBRT. So kind of getting into more of the specifics, comparing, you know, the longer courses of radiation with SBRT, you know, including efficacy. 
when counseling patients or, or when somebody asks, you know, how do you compare, you know, how does one compare SBRT with the longer courses of radiation? So what I tell patients is that these five fraction courses of radiation or SBRT, these are things that we've done here at my home's institution for about 15 years now, is that they are newer, but have been around for some time. So we recently had put out a study that said, I think there's close to 40 phase two trials across the the world that have varying degrees of follow-up that suggest that the toxicity, that being side effects related to the urinary function or the bowel function, seem to be favorable and very comparable to historical treatments with the longer courses. So in that sense, it's become NCCN or a national guideline concordant recommendation for both intermediate and now high risk prostate cancer. But while it's a standard of care, it certainly isn't the standard of care. And there are ongoing phase three trials that are actively testing whether five fraction radiation regimens will be more the favored or the standard of care. And so I tell patients that This is a patient-centric treatment. It's been designed to deliver a shorter course of treatment in a more convenient, cost-effective way. That said, we did not or we do not believe that SBRT or SABR for prostate cancer has a better efficacy than standard radiation courses. We're not delivering this or I'm not recommending my patients because it works better for the cancer compared to historical regimens, or at least, that, at least that's what the data is telling us right now. So it's really designed more on a sort of patient-centric, convenient treatment rather than one that works better to kill the cancer. And you kind of touched on this a little bit in terms of the NCC and guidelines, but you know, in your opinion, who would be a good candidate for SBRT? That's a good question because I think we have to distill the sort of wide bucket where this treatment approach may be a approved or at least guideline concordant and really narrow it down in where the, our best evidence is for this treatment modality. And that's what I try to be do when I'm talking to my patients. And I think that if you look at the predominant composition of the trials that have been done today, they tend to be in patients with intermediate risk prostate cancer. And for Your listeners who may be well-informed or not, that tends to be patients with Gleason 7 or grade groups 2 and 3 cancer. And that seems to be the disease space where we have the best evidence for SBRT, the longest term follow-up for SBRT. It tends to be those of us that have been sort of on the front edge and those of them been, been more comfortable with SBRT, those are the patients that we've done it in the longest And so I'm a bit more hesitant and cautious to apply that same set of data to high-risk disease. That's actually being, is a subject of ongoing comparison in Europe right now is for the high-risk disease space. Um, So I think intermediate risk space is really the, the sweet spot for SBRT. Well, we're going to take a quick break, then we'll be right back. Healthcare consumers are increasingly leveraging online resources to not only prepare for appointments, but also validate physician recommendations. The problem is that many individuals have no idea where to start when doing their research and waste many hours sifting through the endless sea of information on the web. Not to mention the widespread prevalence on the internet for commercial bias and misinformation. For example, on YouTube, it is reported that 87% of videos on BPH and 77% of videos on prostate cancer contain misinformation. More and more individuals are now turning to the Prostate Health Academy for help you no longer have to spend hours upon hours doing your research. The Academy will save you time, energy, and quickly get you up to speed with comprehensive and easy to navigate lessons that I've prepared for you. We also have an active private community forum and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on join now. Again, that is www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on join now. We'll see you on the inside. And this may be a little bit of a review in terms of what we've kind of been talking about with the, maybe some of the benefits, but, you know, again, just, you know, in your, your opinion, you know, what are, again, some of the benefits of choosing SBRT for prostate cancer? As I think you can appreciate with this podcast is our colleagues 
and our patients are becoming more and more invested in their own healthcare. I think they're becoming more and more technologically savvy. And I think many patients will have, at least in my experience, have read extensively about robotic surgery or read extensively about evolutions and technological changes in radiation therapy. And so they'll come in with some some questions about how can we deliver my radiation treatment for me, help me understand what my side effect profile is. But I want to go on and live my life as best as I can, as fast as I can. I have things to do. I am an active, busy person. And some of the patients may not live particularly close to their cancer treatment center or areas, particularly across the country. And so I think that SBRT or the ability to deliver, you know, curative radiation treatment over the, we tend to do the treatments every other day. And so the five treatments end up being about two weeks of treatment. If they know about already is something that they sort of actively discuss with me, or if they don't, if they come in more in the traditional, you are my physician, educate me on my options. I will tell them that this for the right person is an attractive option to conveniently receive their treatment. I will also have sets of patients who may live right next door or very much are, I guess, in the technology world, maybe later adopters or sort of really would like to see the longest term follow up. And there is now or or has been for many years sort of an intermediate treatment, which is hypofractionation, which you may have talked about on your podcast already. But that's a treatment that sort of is sort of like Goldilocks, not so short, not so long. But those treatments that tend to be a month or so um, delivered with the same technology, delivered with the same image image guidance, we'll have patients treat those as well. And so I, I really like to provide, as I think my urologic colleagues do as well, I like to provide an appropriate set of options that allow the patient to decide what's best for them. Well, those are all very good points. And we appreciate you bringing those up. And, and with that, you know, kind of looking at the benefits now, you know, turning around and when counseling patients, how do you counsel them in terms of, you know, what are the risks and potential side effects of this technology? So I think they parallel a lot. My, so we strongly believe here, as I think many do across the country in multidisciplinary care and getting, being able to see a urologist and a radiation oncologist to even have the same man with the same situation that yeah. has different priorities and decides one treatment, radiation, and one person to drive surgery, and that's the right decision for them. With SBRT or radiation therapy in general, one thing I tend to be very cautious with is if you have a man who has significant urinary irritative symptoms at baseline. They go quite frequently at night. Their stream is not what it was when they were 20. And that maybe keeps them up quite a bit at night. I think, as you know, that we all have side effects. And one of the things that happens with radiation therapy tends to be irritative in nature. And that's true of conventional radiation. It's true of hypofractionation. It's true of SBRT. And so I have tended to really based a lot of my decisions on helping to decide radiation therapy and surgery and let that guide. And then once we've decided on a radiation therapy route, then using SBRT or moderate hypofractionation as sort of equivalent options for them. The second piece of information that can help me is that there's a concept it's under multiple brand names, but there are now rectal gel spacers that give us a little bit more space between the rectum and the prostate. And there's ongoing discussions internationally of the magnitude of the benefit and in which which situations the patients do have the biggest benefit. But there is a randomized trial that supports um, some decreased patient-reported bowel symptoms with the utilization of the spacer. And those spacers are what I tend to favor when I'm doing SBRT to give me a little bit more room to deliver those high doses of radiation to the prostate. And so those spacers, the best indication for them is when you do not have any evidence that the cancer has spread outside of the capsule or edge of the prostate. So that sort of harkens back to that intermediate risk disease being the good space for SBRT, because it also tends to be the space where I think it's reasonable sort of discuss and potentially use the spacer. And then finally, I personally with SBRT tend to use MRIs for best delineation or best targeting of the prostate. And so for a man who either is claustrophobic or a man who has 
hardware that precludes a really, you know, high quality MRI. That tends to be a patient that I don't tend to do or recommend SBRT in. Yeah. Well, we are running out of time here on the podcast, but good news. Dr. Des will be sticking around with us after the show to record some valuable bonus content for the Prost Health Academy. We'll be going into even more detail for those individuals considering SBRT as an option for prostate cancer treatment, including what to expect with the treatment from planning all the way through to post-treatment follow-up, how to locate an SBRT center, and some of the different available SBRT delivery options out there, including CyberKnife. If you don't want to miss out on this as well as other valuable Academy content, check it out at www.prostatehealthacademy.com. Well, this has all been very valuable information. Dr. Des, any parting thoughts today for our podcast listeners? Perhaps I'm echoing a bit of what I've said already, but I really do deeply believe in multidisciplinary care. And and I think that our patients benefit from discussion with urology and radiation oncology. And that I think SBRT is a, you can think of it as a tool in our tool bag. And I think it's when appropriately used, it's an excellent treatment choice. And that sits alongside brachytherapy and moderate hypofractionation and surgery. And I think all of these tools allow us to sort of tailor our treatments for our patients to get the best treatment for them. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise today. You've really provided very valuable information, which will help empower our listeners along their prostate journey. So thanks again. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. We would love to have you join our podcast Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Prostate Health Podcast, or just use the Facebook group search function and search for the Prostate Health Podcast and ask to join. We'll see you at the next episode.